in this database doesn't actually have a field in Darwin Core. It's just saying where it came from to begin with. In Darwin Core, the only things we have like it would be a rights holder or an owner institution code. If Louisiana State University still owned the specimen, even though it was in the other collection, then it would be an owner institution code. But that's not the case here either. So this one really cannot be mapped. If you wanted, you could put it in dynamic properties if you wanted to keep it for some reason. Okay, next we get into geography. Much of geography was easy. The only difficult one was continent and ocean, and I don't blame you at all for it being difficult because this collection decided to mix two different concepts in one field. At least two different Darwin Core concepts. So Darwin Core has a continent field, but oceans don't go in there. Darwin Core has a water body field, and that's where the oceans would go. And so you can see that someone said continent and water body, which is true. And everyone else, no, not everyone else, most others chose continent. Continent is where the real continent should go, but water body is where the ocean should go. And higher geography is where all of it can go. So this is actually a good choice. But we want the continents to be saved in the continent field if possible, and we want the oceans to be saved in the ocean field if possible. So now, if I'm the one to map the data, what do I do? I can't say everything in the continent ocean field goes to continent. I have to decide which ones go to continent. And so it becomes a much more difficult problem. Right? I have to do the mapping not just on the field, but on the contents of the field. Which is getting really complicated. Now, when I do this for people, I do that. I actually do the mapping based on the contents of the field, but I do it using separate tables that are lookup tables. It would tell me if the value of continent ocean field is the North Atlantic Ocean, then put North Atlantic Ocean in the water body field and put nothing in the continent field. Okay, but I'm doing all this with automatic scripts that check on all these cross field conditions. It's not a simple mapping. Okay, so it turns out that what they did here makes life very complicated. And what they did here was they mixed concepts. So this is a lesson in database design and construction is when you build your database, try to be very specific about what a field contains. Don't allow it to contain multiple concepts. Because if you ever want to separate them, it becomes a lot of work, just like this. Does that make sense? Be specific. Okay, we get then into a series of fields in their database that really are about their own collection management. They're not information that is shared via the Darwin Core. It's telling us where in the collection, which case, physical case, in the collection, can you find the specimen? And in which drawer? So where is it exactly in their own collection? And that's not the kind of information that everybody else in the world needs to know. Only they need to know it. So for me, these don't get mapped to Darwin Core. They don't get shared. Similarly, the next two, cat year and cat order, are about the cataloging process. So again, something inside their own database. Cat year is the year in which the specimen was cataloged. Not the year in which it was collected, but when it was cataloged. So most people don't need to know that. And then cat order is the order in which it was cataloged. The actual 75th specimen, for example. So again, for some reason that's important to them, but probably not to the rest of the world. So these end up, to me, to be not um, 
mapped at all. We already talked about the begin and end days of months and years. Then we get to a common name. Common name is, in their database, the vernacular name. The, the common names used for the taxon, the scientific name as a common name. So the only problem here was the mapping to state province. I'm not sure why that was done. But in general, it seemed that that wasn't a problem to figure out the vern vernacular name. Then most recent check, most people decided that that should be modified, not all. One decided it should be an identification verification status. And those are both interesting choices. However, modified in Darwin Core is the last date and time in which the data record had any changes made to it. So if the taxon name was changed, the modified date should be changed at that point. Same for any field. Now, we're sharing these records as Darwin Core. So the modified date is the date in which any of the fields of the Darwin Core were changed. Right? That's how it should be, that the modified date for a Darwin Core record is the date in which anything in the Darwin Core record was changed. Which means modified date is not actually the same thing necessarily as the date of change in a database. Why is that? That's because there are other sources of change in the Darwin Core field. For example, if I'm processing this original data source for the collection to turn it into Darwin Core, and I'm doing all this stuff to their original data to make it into Darwin Core, if I make a change to the process, I can change the Darwin Core record, even though it didn't change in the original data. Right? I'm doing something to the Darwin Core record that didn't happen in their own record. So I can actually introduce a modification date myself, where the collection did not. Now, back in to their database, the most recent check isn't actually that concept at all. It's the most recent date in which somebody went to the collection and saw the physical specimen. Usually, what they're doing is this field gets updated whenever they put the specimen on loan or when they get it back from a loan. So they've seen it. They know that it's there, they know what condition it's in, and this contains the date in which that happened. Which is not the same idea as a Darwin Core modified date, which is a modified date for a digital record. Okay? Then we have three of the higher classification fields from Darwin Core, and those were easy. They all had the same names. And then we have the georeferences, which were almost entirely easy. But for some reason, someone chose coordinate precision for decimal latitude and longitude. And I can make a guess why that is, but I'm not certain. This really should be the decimal latitude and longitude. But because it says decimal here, I'm guessing that the person thought that decimal signified precision. But that's not the case. Coordinate precision in Darwin Core is a measure of how specific a decimal latitude and longitude are. So for example, if the decimal latitude and longitude were always given to the nearest degree, then the coordinate precision would be the number one, as in one degree. If they're always given to the nearest half degree, then the coordinate precision would be 0 0.05. Sorry, 0 0.5. It would be to the nearest half of a degree. How precise is the decimal latitude and longitude? The reason that field exists is because you cannot rely on the value alone to tell you its precision. It needs to be explicit. Right? 
This is something I've seen in entomology collections all the time. They'll put down the coordinates and they will attempt to encode the precision of those coordinates in what is written down. I understand the logic behind trying to do so. It's because the labels are only this big and so you try to get as much information on there as possible. But there are ways to be wrong about that. And you don't want to allow people to be able to be wrong. And so it's better to be very explicit about what the precision is, if you can. Okay? To say how precise that is. On the georeferencing day, we might have time to talk about that in a little bit more detail. Why that is. And the rest, I think, was all just fine. Okay, so are there any questions about my interpretation and how I mapped the information? There's only one other thing I want to show about it, but if there are any questions about that much or about what you did versus what I'm saying should be done, go ahead and ask now. No? Okay. The one other thing I want to show you and to explain a little bit is this. What I have here is that same exact data set after it goes through my process to turn it into a Darwin Core record. So what I have in this database is one column for every Darwin Core field, every simple Darwin Core field. And what I tried to do was to populate every single one of them, even if the original database didn't have it. So, you remember when we were trying to do this in the IPT and I was making mappings? And we saw in IPT that there was no type field in the original data. But we knew that they were all specimens and that they were therefore all physical objects. So I inserted the value physical object for every record. So in Darwin Core, it's been filled in by me. I also filled in the modified date to be the last date on which the Darwin Core record was modified. So exactly the definition that I talked about before. I'm the only person in the world who knows what that is because I was the one to do the last modification myself. So to produce this field, I have to compare the data that I have right now against the last time that I made the transformation into Darwin Core. And if they're exactly the same, then the modified date is the old one. If I've changed anything, the modified date is today. So I'm providing this information also because I'm the one doing the processing. I filled in that the records were all in English for this data set. I filled in, and this is interesting, I filled in the location of the legal document about the rights. In this case, it's actually the license, the specific license under which these data can be used, and it's on every single record. Now, the reason I can show you these data in this context is that they have been released in the public domain. I don't have to ask permission to show them to you or to use them in this way. Because this collection said that all of these data were collected on public funds and should therefore be freely and openly available to the world. And that's what that means. So as a consumer, I can look at this and say, okay, I can put this on the map and I can publish the map and I have not violated anyone's rights. And they're saying so in every single record, not just at the level of the whole data set. This means that when I mix these data with data from other institutions, for example, when I do a query from GBIF, all of these records will show me you can use it any way you want. Whereas others might say you can only use it if you tell me that you used it and how you used it. Or you can only use it if you ask my permission first. So this is what the rights field is for. 
So I'm filling in plenty of things that were not in the original database, but that make the data more usable. Question? Where? Okay, one second. I'd like to ask you, in this table we have just uh, in, here in the, in the, the column of uh, other ID number, mm -hmm. we have seen that there is no formula for, for them. They are ho somewhere where it's, it's written with these capital letters and the numbers and the way it's written like this, just the whole word. Mm -hmm. with, well, it's just, we, there is no, no way to take, just to write ID number, it's just you, you can write them as you, as